Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Ro Jones, and I just wanted to come to you guys to talk about something that I think is extremely interesting, right? So we all know that when you look all around the world, what do the indigenous natives of that landmass look like? Let me give you like a couple seconds to really think about it. What do they look like? What color hue is their complexion? Thank you, they're dark skin. However, when it comes to the Americas, let me not say dark skin because they're, they're various shades of brown, the color brown, that's better, that's better. However, when it comes to the Americas, Somebody just make it make sense. Like none of it makes sense. Every single continent, you go to Asia, the indigenous people are my color, maybe a little lighter, maybe a little darker. You go to Australia, the indigenous people are darker complected. Everywhere except for the Americas. It seems like somebody's lying and we've all been maybe a little misinformed. I was looking on Instagram at this popular, I, I guess you could sit him Pan-African. Uh, that's the type of content that he puts out. However, he is an American, so I don't know what the term, you know, over the pond, what they would call, I, I don't know, but he promotes Africa. <laughs> and he posted an elder saying that he was not um, African, basically saying that he was an Indian. And his caption, I can't, don't quote me, like, I'm not, I don't know what verbatim, but basically he was saying how this guy was delusional and, you know, and no one wants to be African. And I scrolled through the comment section and I saw this girl and she was like, yeah, you know, that's crazy. Like, a lot of elders are delusional and they don't want to, you know, claim their African roots because my grandfather told me that we were Indian. And I'm like, you mean to tell me that you'd rather trust people that don't look like you, people that don't like you, people that have disenfranchised you, people that have suppressed you, to tell you about who you are as opposed to believing your literal ancestry line? And I ain't talking about Ancestry.com, I'm talking about your grandparents and your great grandparents and your great great grandparents you mean to tell me i have to get close on that one because that really and i said that i was like um so you'd rather believe these folk out here the powers that be in this country you believe anything they tell you whether it be the media news outlets whether it be the you know just somebody saying anything even down to the things that we learned in school. Like, come on, a spade is a spade. But not your literal bloodline. I don't, I'm very, I am, I am confused. I had the privilege of knowing, I was raised by my great grandmother. She was born in 1935. My great great grandmother was born in 1919 and I, I knew her my whole entire life. She passed away. <clears throat> Excuse me. I believe in it was either 2013 or 2014. I knew her. She would rock in her rocking chairs. She was in Glasscock County, Georgia, right outside of Augusta. And literally, there was acres that my family owned. And it was literally a cotton field next to her house. I literally picked cotton. I know that sounds crazy, but you know, I'm young and like curious like, what is this stuff? Literally, peach trees, pecan trees. We pick peaches and pecans for cakes and pies, like it was a dirt road. It was beautiful. The sky was lit up with stars at night. And she'd tell me some horrific stories. I won't delve into <clears throat> what it was like for her, but she would be considered mulatto because her mom was, wasn't darker complected and they considered her white. However, I saw like, um, you know the, how the olden like day portraits would look kind of portraitish, like not necessarily like a snap picture. And present day, so that would be my great, great, great grandmother, 
she could be white passing or she could also be what people would consider multiracial along those lines. And her father was a darker complected man. And one sketch she was one in 1919. When did they say uh, the slavery ended? Um, oh God, don't chew me out if I'm wrong. 1864, 1863. That is not that far away from 1919. So traditions, you know, where you're from, those things are passed down and carried with you. And her last name was Moss. I had never heard her speak of Africa. And my great grandmother that was born in 1935, we buried her in 2016, she died before, just before Christmas in 2015. I asked her if we were Africans, she said, no, we're not Africans, we come from Georgia. And I was like, I asked about slavery, I asked about all of these things. She did mention something similar and akin to sharecropping, but never once did she tell me that anybody was a slave and shackles. I never heard any of those stories. Fast forward, I finally met my granddad on my father's side. I had never met him before. He's like butter, butter pecan complexed. He has colored eyes. He's super cute. And talking to him, he's from Virginia. And this was like two summers ago. And he told me that they were Indian, Cherokee. And his grandfather was an Irish man. Nobody ever told me anything about Africa. And I'm, I'm not here to tell people what they should think, what they should believe. But I honestly would trust my grandparents any day over a book that you know people read in a college that you know in a, in a course that was curated by someone that absolutely despises me just a little food for thought all right now i'm about to go i'm about to go to karaoke because i love to sing <laughs> seriously though just think about that a lot of it just doesn't add up why 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 do they say that every quote unquote black person think they're Indian. The truth gotta lie somewhere in the middle. Everybody ain't lying. Like, come on. All right. Love y'all.